us to make decisions in certain ways uh, the way we have been impacted. So, uh, and, you know, and on Mother's Day, uh, there's, uh, you know, when you look back and you reflect and there is uh, a lot of sen- sentimentality and all that's, it, it's, that's some real good stuff. Amen. Amen. And there's another side uh, to moms and, and to women. Oh, y'all look so wonderful. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, I don't know about you. Church is getting old. I like to see youth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God they ain't coming up with walkers and canes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me take a minute and shout. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, glad to see these young people. So I've been impacted by wise women who win the war. Wise women who win the war. See, first of all, they knew they, they were in a war. <laughs> you see, women who aren't that wise don't even realize that they're in a war. But it's a war. It's a war. You know, when I, I look out on the bulletin board and I see Beth Baleka, you know, uh, a strong woman. And she says, Pastor, when are you coming to Africa with me? I said, well, I'm praying about it. She said, stop praying and come. <laughs> I said, well, I got to check with my wife. <laughs> I said, Beth, I said, but Beth, where are you going? I'm going to Darfur. I'm going to Nigeria. I'm going. I, I said, Beth, it's dangerous. You, you, you can lose your life over there. She said, it's all for the cause of Christ, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor, I'll do it for the cause of Christ. <laughs> well, I'm praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to strong women. <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, I was figuring out how come I uh, love Marcia so much. And uh, early on in our marriage, uh, Marcia said, uh, you know, you may beat me up. I said, honey, I ain't, I ain't never lifted a finger to you. She said, I know. I'm just letting you know. She said, you may beat me up, but don't go to bed. <laughs> I didn't mean to get your wife started. <laughs> Yeah, she said, this same frying pan that I love to cook with. <laughs> but see, they, they tell me, my, my grandmother, uh, down south, when men came to uh, get my grandfather, and uh, Grandma said he wasn't there. And she had all the lights turned out. Got the kids gathered around with sticks and everything. And they said, we know he's in here. She said, well, come on in and find him. (laughs) See, there's a war. And wise women always knew that there was a war. Amen. And so wise women win the war. You know, I mean, there's a scripture in Jeremiah that God says, uh, he says, the nation is wicked. They won't listen. They're not listening to me. They keep doing what they're doing. And so God says, I'm going to bring a new thing. So what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to cause a woman to encompass a man. The idea is to protect, provide. In other words, if the men won't do it, I'm going to raise up women who are going to do it. It's a new thing. That's not new to us. Remember, this this is 700 years before Christ. Jeremiah's writing this. And so we have grown up with women who stood with a man wasn't going to do it. Women won the war. They fought. They wise. They they won the war. And so I think about my my grandmother and challenging uh, people. They said, well, come on in. Amen. I think about uh, the, heri- uh, the heritage. <clears throat> My mother working uh, in a house, and 
the uh, husband uh, sends his wife and kids off. Y'all go to town. The wife says, well, I don't want to go to, go to town. My mother working in the, in the kitchen. Grabs a butcher knife. <laughs> she said it won't be easy. <laughs> There's a war. Wise women win the war. Win the war. The writer says in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13, in contrast to a wise woman, and this is what we're seeing today, but I thank God for all the wise women. Now, they're not a whole lot in comparison, but count yourself as wise women because you love the Lord. You understand there's a war, and you're winning the war because you're making a difference. Amen. Look at Proverbs 9, 13. It says, a foolish woman, this is a woman without Jesus, a woman without God. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. So here's the person that lives his life. A foolish woman lives her life as there is no God. And so she doesn't invite God in to direct her life. The foolish woman, she's clamorous, which means she's loud. You remember James Brown, he said, talking loud. She's simple. The idea of simple means she's naive. See, if you think you can get through life without God, you are naive. So she's loud, she's naive, and she knows nothing. The idea is that all that we know amounts to nothing without the knowledge of God. So she may have a Ph.D. She may have all kinds of things going on, but if she doesn't know the Lord, all that knowledge amounts to nothing. Let me, let me give you another person who said that, the Lord Jesus. What does it profit? Gain the whole world. Lose your soul. That knowledge amounts to nothing. But thank and praise God we've had wise women understanding that there's a war and that war is about the world, the flesh, and the devil. And women raised their children in spite of whatever circumstances they were in to be more than conquerors and overcomers. How about uh, back in, in, you know, in the uh, Civil War times and slavery times and, and uh, we had the Underground Railroad and women who were leaders saying, if you're not willing to stand the test, don't start out. Amen. Amen. You say, where's that, come, where's that come from? Jesus sold his disciples. He told his Pharisees, he said, unless you stand the test, you cannot be my disciple. You had women who were saying, unless you're ready to deal with the hardship, don't try the Underground Railroad because you're going to wreck it for uh, not only yourself, but everybody else. So you got to stand the test. Amen. So wise women, there's a war to, to be fought. And there's a challenge and there's understanding that we, we just can't skate by. We have got to put forth our, our best effort. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 16, 11 and 16, it says, A gracious woman retains honor, but ruthless men retain riches. You see, in other words, ruthless human beings, ruthless men will try to get rich no matter how they do it. They'll put themselves first. They're ruthless because they're taking care of number one. That's the philosophy that people have. But it doesn't work as far as Christianity goes. It doesn't work as far as anything goes. Because if all I'm going to do is take care of myself, then I'm certainly going to neglect or hurt others who are dependent upon me. You can't be a good father or a good mother and only take care of yourself. So ruthless people try to retain what they have, but you know what? They can't do it. They can't do it. You can't you can't hold on to what you got. Talking with with my granddaughter uh, Lindsay, and you know she graduated uh, yesterday, and uh, so uh, and one of the things that that uh, that I noticed 
I'm listening. And so she, she got her, her master's degree. And many of you have gone to school, praise the Lord, graduated from high school, graduated uh, with undergrad degree, and, we know, and now going on to med school and all this sort of thing, and uh, graduated uh, with their master's. And the thing that I kept hearing was names that I couldn't pronounce. And the folks that I thought, they looked like me, they didn't talk like me. So where are we at? Where are we at? And see, it's hard. You've got to work hard to graduate. You've got to work hard to get a master's degree. You have to work hard at it. And what you find is a lot of folks will not work hard. And therefore, they think they're going to make it without working hard. It says a gracious woman retains honor. The word gracious has the idea of a woman of grace. A woman of grace, of God's grace. So a woman who was energized by God's grace keeps her honor. No matter what everybody else is trying to do. You see that? See, there's opposition. You're going to have ruthless people against you. But a woman of grace return, return, oh, excuse me, retains her honor. You can't make her give it up. She's going to live empowered by grace. And that's what grace does. Grace is more than just unmerited favor and kindness. Grace is divine enablement. That's why the old folks used to say, my soul looked back and wonder how I made it over, how I got over, how I got over. Because God gave grace. Grace not only covers sins, but grace provides the divine power so you and I can be more than what we're supposed to be. So a woman of grace retains honor. You don't have to let your honor go to make it. Amen. Amen. A gracious woman, a woman of grace. Let the Lord keep sustaining you. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Anybody hear Tony Evans this morning? Tony was talking about uh, uh, Ruth and uh, Naomi. And uh, also he was talking about the, the, the one who went back. And she made a decision that was good decision to make if you're looking by it with, eye, with eyesight. But Ruth trusted in the God of her mother-in-law. And what Tony was saying, is, said, listen, listen uh, many women will go back into the world like Orpha. Orpha? See, she went back in the world to get her man. That's what Tony was saying. Mother-in-law said you can't get a man in Jerusalem, in, in Israel. So baby went back into the world. Tony said, I know a whole lot of women who felt that God wasn't going to provide because the list was well, the man, I'm looking for a man, well, now he got to be godly. He got to be a Christian. He got he to read the word. He got, well, shoot, there ain't many men like that. So I'm going back into the world to get my man. I said, go ahead, Tony. <laughs> he said, but Maintain your honor. Amen. Don't go back in the world. Amen. Amen. I've had talks with my granddaughter a long time. Hey, baby. Look, you know, I love you. Don't settle for some mess out there. Amen. Retain your honor, my sister. Amen. Amen. And so she caught it because I heard her say one time, she said, I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> I don't need somebody else. Amen. Amen. That's all, you, you got it. Amen. A gracious woman retains her honor. I thank the Lord for a lot of you women. I mean, you know, you're gracious women. You're women of grace. See it all in you. Now, all of us have messed up. I'm not talking about that. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the grace of God has come on the scene. Amen. Amen. And all of us, who the grace of God is coming to, we went from ugly ducklings to the precious swan. <laughs> Amen. Look at me now. Hallelujah. Gracious women. 
friendship, there's a lot of gracious women here, and I thank God for you. I thank God for you. You know, one of the things I said for my, for my grandmother who wouldn't put up with no stuff, to my mother, to my wife, I remember telling her, I said, uh, you know, one of the things I appreciate about you is I know I just can't run dog you. I can't run you. I know that. I don't want a woman I can run over. <laughs> Ain't that right, Arnold? <laughs> That's my brother Deacon over there. <laughs> I know his wife well. <laughs> she said, Pastor, if he me- he's a deacon. She said, I, but he already knows if he mess up, I got a testimony Sunday. (laughs) You heard the song that say, wait, stop the wedding. She said, I'm going to say, wait, hold up, stop the proceeding. Got a testimony here. (laughs) Amen. See, we need, we need parameters. We we need uh, stuff around us. You can't hang around with folks who mean you no good and who mean themselves no good. You got to hang around with folks who are going to help you. That's why the Bible says uh, that uh, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, bad companionship. You know, it'll ruin good manners. Amen. Grace. The grace of God is there for all of us. Just ask the Lord. Lord, give me grace to be what you want me to be. Call upon the name of the Lord, and, he, and He'll give it to you abundantly. More than you could ask or imagine. Proverbs 11, uh, what is that? Uh, 22, Proverbs 11, 22. Now these things do not go together. Notice, it says, as a ring of gold is in a swine. That's a pig. A pig's snout, snout, a pig's nose. You know what a pig's snout is. See, I mean, you can put a golden ring in there. You're still a pig. So the Bible says, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. So, see, women, you need to have, have discretion because a, a, lo- a woman who is a lovely woman without discretion, those things don't go together. It's misplaced the same way that you would uh, place a, uh, a gold, uh, a ring of gold in a snout's nose. I mean, a, a swine's snout. Well, you don't want to do that. They don't go together. Ladies, as you grow and you develop, this discretion, another word for discretion is discernment. 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 Prayerfully check out God and develop discernment as to where you ought to be doing, what you ought to be doing, where you're going. As a ring of gold is in a swine's snout, so is a lovely woman. I thank God for a lot of women who, you know, who, who understand and employ discretion. The Bible says in the New Testament that what happens is older women teach younger women. Amen. 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 The book of Titus. Because, see, older women have been through stuff. Amen. 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 You, you know, and I, I've said to young ladies, I said, listen, you've got some women in the church here. Uh, you have family. Before you make this decision, talk to some godly women. Because these people love you, and they have discretion and discernment. And if everybody, every woman who was a little older, who'd been through some things, is telling you don't make this choice, then it's good to listen. Because nobody's trying to stop you from having fun. People don't want, want to see you hurt. And all that glitters is not gold. Amen. Amen. Next, uh, Proverbs uh, 12, 4. Proverbs 12, 4. Notice what it says here. An excellent wife, I praise the Lord, is the crown of her husband. But she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. Amen. But thank God for the excellent wives that we have. Excellent wives. Excellent wives. Praise the Lord. Proverbs uh, 14 and 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. The idea is what she's doing. See, a wise woman builds her house. Wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord, right? So a wise woman will build her house, but the foolish woman, the woman without God, she will 
actions, what she will do is she will pull her house down. You see, there's, there's building materials, wood, hay, and stubble. Or there's gold, silver, and precious stones. The wise women, women, women employ the spirit of God, the word of God, the wisdom of God. And what happens is the house is getting built. So when we look at our heritage and we go back and when, so again, we see, and here I, I see grandma, I see mother, uh, I see aunts. And uh, one of the things that uh, when we got together at different times, I would spend time with uncles, but I also would spend time, I'd go over to where, where the aunts were. i just sit down. I don't know if they remember that, but different times I'd just sit down and listen to the aunts. Because wise women build the house. Amen. And you begin to understand what wise, see, if, you, if you've never seen a wise woman, <laughs> then it's hard to discover what they're like. So you got to ask somebody, show me some wise women that I can go learn from. But most of the time, you got them in your family. And you don't have to listen that much. You just, you just watch. You watch. Because when it comes to Christianity, it's not so much uh, taught as it is caught. Oh, this is, oh, I see this. I see that. I see this. And, you know, come Father's Day, I'll, I'll be saying, uh, my uncles never told me to, hey, man, go to work. You get, you get 18, go to work. Go to work. No, I just knew, I, I just knew every man in my house, so I went to work. <laughs> so as I grew up, I figured, this is what men do. We go to work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I didn't have to be told. I caught it. So, but if you've never seen a man go to work. So wise women keep building. Amen. No matter what the circumstances uh, are, we keep building. Psalm 127, verse 1. This goes along with Proverbs 14, 1. Notice, unless the Lord builds the house. See, wise, so wise women, looking at where does wisdom come from? The fear of the Lord. The Lord builds the house. They labor in vain who build it. So a wise woman employs the things of the Lord to build the house. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, again, I look out of uh, this Mother's Day and I say thank God for uh, women who were wise and uh, who set up uh, uh, something for us to follow. We have a heritage because of wise women. Let me go to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Skip some verses. Go to Ecclesiastes 7, 23 through 29. Ecclesiastes. Remember, the wise man Solomon is talking about everything under the sun, which means he's looking at life without God. And it's a closed system. So in, in Ecclesiastes 3, he says, let me tell you something. Uh, he says, everything is appropriate in its time. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. Time to laugh, time to cry, all these sort of things. Okay, what he's saying is that because we are in this system created by God and people have sinned, then the system is closed and there's no way for us to get out from under it. But God has put eternity in our heart. We want, I mean, who wants to live this way? Get, get old? I mean, it's so uh, you're going to die. And that's what he's saying. So there's a time to laugh. Well, we like that. But there's a time to cry. He so, said, well... I'm going to try to fix it so I'll never cry. I'm sorry. There's going to be a time to cry. And, that, and so why? Because in this system without God, we got life, we got death, we got sorrow, pain, we got happiness, we got different things. And so what the writer does is he says, no matter what you and I do, we cannot come out from under this system. I was just uh, looking at something the other day uh, about getting older and uh, what happens as you get older. You're going, man, yeah, you're right. Uh, I was talking with my, uh, uh, my, my son-in-law's dad yesterday and I hadn't seen him for a little while. And so he asked me, how am I doing? I said, well, pretty good. I've, got, I've had a couple things happen. And then he was telling me about what's going on in his life. 
He said he needed this surgery, and he said he woke up one morning, and uh, he said he had a haze in his eye, and they, he had a mini stroke. And uh, I said, man, that happens to me a week or so before Thanksgiving. I woke up, look, my eye all cloudy, I go to wash it out, don't come out. And since, since then, I've been to eye specialists and all this, it's, it's improving. And so my point is, hey, you get older. You can't stop the aging process. God says, so under the sun, there's a time for all this. And I'm looking and I'm going, they say your brain is not as effective as it used to be. All kind of stuff. And I'm going, that's the process. And under the sun, without God, none of us can stop the process. Say, Lord, I like laughter. I like birth. I don't want death. I don't want pain. Can't stop that process. We're caught underneath that. And so under the sun. But since there is a God and we are able to communicate with God, we still go through this system, but we have eternal life. Without God, there's no way out of this system. The Bible says when David died, he went the way of all the earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. The death rate is one per person. Yeah. <laughs> A- amen. I mean, and so, but because I know Jesus, you see, now I'm able to get out from under that, but under the sun. So notice what he says in Proverbs 7, uh, 23. He says, all this I have proved means he's tested. I tested everything. And but my brothers and sisters, don't we do that? Don't go through life not testing stuff. Amen. Don't go through life. I mean, you, you got to, the Bible says prove all things in, in uh, Thessalonians. Amen. You got to test things. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, you, 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 uh, you walk in. I remember uh, Marsha and I were looking at this car, and uh, the guy says, okay, I think this is a pretty good deal, but I got to test it out <laughs> with my uh, owner, you know, with the uh, supervisor in the back. <laughs> Marsha said, well, go ahead. We'll be gone. <laughs> he got, he, hold, he sat back down. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> he, and she said, you say the deal's okay. We say the deal's okay. Who else you going to see? <laughs> she said, so if it ain't good between me, between us now, she said, we gone. Well, hold up. Like, you see what I'm saying? Marcia tested it. She said, test all things. <laughs> So what Solomon said, I've proved by wisdom. And one thing I learned there, uh, my brothers and sisters, especially the men, you know what? If I'm going to buy a car, I make sure I'm going with somebody, another man who's, who's disinterested. Because <laughs> I'll look at that car. Oh, man, look at that. Woo, it'd be looking so good. Hey, Amen. You know, I need another man to say, hold up. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> Don't get too excited. You got to test all things. He said, I proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. Okay? See, I'm going to get all this on my own. No, you're not. No, you're not. I don't need any help. Yes, you do. I proved this by wisdom. I will be wise, but it was far from me. See, have you learned you're not so smart yet? <laughs> Amen. And you learn this, you know, I, I'm a big sports guy. I love sports. And when I left Youngstown, Ohio, and man, I thought I was a pretty good guy. But I ended up in the, in the, uh, in the service, and man, I played against some cats, some cats out of New York and Chicago. And I'm going, look at this. <laughs> My little homegrown stuff was nothing. <laughs> what is, amen. So, you know, it says, far from me. Amen. The ver- next verse says here in verse 24, uh, but as for that which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? <laughs> who can find it out? So he goes on and he says this, I applied my heart to know, to search and to seek out wisdom uh, and the reason of things, to know the wickedness of folly. You know, foolishness is wicked, he says. Even the foolishness and madness, verse 26 
Notice he says, and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, whose hands are fetters or chains. Okay? He says, he who pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be trapped by her. Now, what, he, this, this, what Solomon is saying, you know, you learn something. And he learns something about in, in growing in, in life. And he says, what's more bitter than death is having a woman whose heart is snares and nets, whose hands are chains or fetters. See, if you were just looking for a woman, there are a whole lot of women out there. You can find a woman. But you know, Proverbs says, who can find a virtuous woman? You can find a woman. Women, you can find a man. <laughs> They're all around. You can find a male, let's say it this way. You can find males, but maybe not a real man. So notice what Solomon does. He goes on and he says in uh, verse 27, here is what I found. Okay, see, he searched. He said, here's what I found, says the preacher. Adding one thing to other to find out the reason, verse 28, which my soul still seeks, but I cannot find. Notice, one man among a thousand I have found. <laughs> one man among a thousand I have found. But a woman... Among all these, I have not found. <laughs> see, women are rare. You see what he's saying? So if you're looking under the sun and you're looking in this world, you're in a battle, the world, the flesh, and the devil. You make choices in the world according to your flesh, and the devil is going to be there to, uh, to be your enemy. He says, you're not going to find this. Because you're looking in the wrong places. One out of a thousand men. And he said, but I haven't found a woman yet. Because he's looking under the sun. He's looking without God. You see that? And, see, and, and you learn, you know, when you put God into the picture and you allow him to help you make a choice, now you see what you didn't see before. Amen. And you see, what I'm saying is that we are in a battle. Thank God for godly women. Women who are, we're in a war. And we have women who have fought and won in this war. And so on this Mother's Day, I applaud you. But we got to keep on praying and trusting God that he will provide more and more godly women. Because under the sun, you can't find them. Amen. Amen. You, you know, you go going to the bar to find a woman. Go ahead. You go on here. You go on there. You go on the parties. All that kind of stuff. Solomon said, you ain't going to find nothing. You won't find anything. And he goes on to say, listen, in verse 29, truly, this only have I found. So what do you found? I have found that God made man, that's human beings, he made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. You can't, it's hard to find a godly man, hard to find a godly woman. What have you found, Solomon? I have found out that God created us upright. But in the world, what you're going to find, people who are scheming. God made us upright. You got men and women scheming. But thank God for wise women, wise women who are fighting the war, raising up sons, amen, taking care of situations. Even Smokey Robinson knew that. Y'all don't know Smokey. Hey, you remember Smokey saying, I can't remember all, the whole song. Remember Smokey saying this, this song about his mother told him. <laughs> so, 
Smokey's mom said, Smokey's mom said, listen, you, you know, be a man, my son, be, before you take her hand, my son. Make a choice, my son. <laughs> Amen. Solomon said the same thing. Before you and I, young ladies and young men, before you get hung up with stuff, you need the, the counsel of wise, godly women who, will know, who know how to win the war. Amen. You don't go to somebody who's been defeated. They tell you how to win. Amen. You know, ain't nobody, you know, I'm a big Browns fan. Ain't nobody went up to Cleveland to find out how you win championships. <laughs> now they're going to Tom Brady. Amen. They're going to Tom Brady. They're going to the Patriots. Amen. The only time we had people coming to, to, to Cleveland uh, it was excited. We had Johnny Manziel. Yeah. People came all excited and found out he was not what we thought he, we had. <laughs> Looking in all the right and the wrong places. Wise men, wise women win the war. Amen. I, and again, I, so I'm going to stop here. I, I just want to say, because let, let, let us out, try to get out early. Mother's Day. But praise the Lord for mothers, godly mothers. I'm going to go back. See, I have made wise choices in women because they started with my grandmother. My grandmother wouldn't put up with no stuff. Amen. Then my mother. And then my wife. And that's why I've had, I've had women come by. You, you ready to get married again? <laughs> no, you, I, had, I had a good woman. Amen. Amen. I know what a good woman looks like. I know how a good woman acts. Amen. And so therefore... I'm, as my granddaughter said, I'm satisfied to do bad all by myself. <laughs> there is a war to be fought, and I just want to thank you godly women. You godly women, strong women. Amen. Amen. I, I remember, again, looking at, who was that in the, the, uh, the Sojourner Truth? Or? Yeah, that's right. Yes. And, and, and she told men, she said, if you can't take this stuff, then don't get in this. <laughs> don't go, whoa, this is tough stuff. And in order to win, you got to fight the fight. So wise women win the war. I'm a product of wise women. Amen. Amen. Thank you, women. Thank you, mothers. So, yesterday at, at the graduation, as uh, they, they ended up, uh, you know, they, uh, at Kent State, they had Michael Keaton. You know, he was the keynote speaker. And uh, they gave him a couple of awards, you know, honorary doctor's degree and all that. So, as he stopped, uh, he got back up and he said, I'm going to leave you with two words. Two words I'm going to leave you with. Remember these words. And he, you know, he, he, he let the suspense build. And he says two words, I'm Batman. <laughs> I said, that was good, brother. <laughs> you know, he starred in the movie. Yeah, he says, I'm, that was, that was one of the lines. Yeah, I'm Batman, everybody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. So I like to say to, the, uh, to my mother, grandmother in absence and to my aunts i thank god for you Amen. to women here at friendship i thank god for you Amen. yes sir uh, yes ma'am praise god one godly woman said to me and that was florence jones florence jones florence jones said pastor said i i beg god for this man she said, I prayed and I cried and I told the Lord I won't be able to live without him. 
She said, I got him. I told the Lord, I can't live with him. <laughs> Be careful, you might get what you want. <laughs> Father, we thank you for godly women. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I know it's, just, it's, it's enjoyable as we look with all the things that we've been talking about. A gracious woman retains honor. We, we come from a rich heritage of gracious women who retained honor regardless of how they had to live and what they had to do. And so they lived sacrificially, and uh, they taught us to stand. They taught us to be strong. And so we give you the glory for that kind of example. And so now, Father, we ask that you would continue to guide us and lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And again, uh, today, Father, I just thank you. I'm so, gracious, I'm so grateful for how you have worked in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. I thank you again for godly, wise women. And uh, again, thank you, Lord. You know, your word says that the, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. Father, we thank you for godly women who have conducted themselves in such ways that you know that there are things that you wouldn't even attempt to do with these women. You're not going to say certain things. You're not going to act in a way. Uh, you're not going to come up with situations and different things that, because you know that they're godly. And so all that does is help all of us stay in line. And I've seen other places where people fool around with what they say and how they treat one another. And Solomon himself said, you cannot take fire like that into your bosom and not get burned. So I thank you for wise women who win the war and who conduct themselves in such a way that you already know, don't even try to go there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's a blessing and a privilege to grow up in that kind of situation. So we honor you. We bring you the glory. And thank you for the wise women who are continuing to build their houses. You know, again, not, and foolish women will tear it down with what they do, what they say, how they act. But the wise women trust the Lord, trust the word of God. So once again, on this Mother's Day, we have joy unspeakable and full of glory because you have worked in women. And we don't have uh, different things going on and uh, reputations of doing this and that. Because godly, wise women are battling and fighting and winning the war. We give you the glory in this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friendship, praise the Lord for you.